cycle race at Jones Road Sports Ground. Joan Road Sports Ground is now part of Croke Park's Great Stadium. The cyclists in the picture are Herbie Breeden, Frank Baird and Bertie Donnelly. And the race took place during the late 1920s when cycling sports were in their infancy in Ireland. The trio in the picture were all, were all at the top of their sport. Bertie Donnelly had represented Ireland in the 1928 Olympics in Amsterdam and did well in the cycling events, unfortunately without medals to bring home. In 1933, Herbie Breeden from St. Patrick's Park in Blanchardstown and Bertie Donnelly won the 25 mile Irish Tandem Championships. Both were members of the Harp Cycling Club. Bertie Donnelly and his son Sean later ran the well-known shanty pub in Mulhuddock village. In November 1977, Herbie and Bertie, who were partners in the tandem racing 44 years previously, died on the same day within hours of each other. They lie today in Mulhuddock Cemetery on the yards of Pren, yards apart, fence for them. Sir Neville Francis Fitzgerald Chamberlain. Sir Neville lived nearby in Oakland's house, Dismalstown. He was Inspector General of the Royal Irish Constabulary from 1900 until 1916. On his watch, Dublin, then the second city of the British Empire, fell into rebel hands for one week in Easter 1916. Sir Neville had ignored intelligence reports informing him of the impending rise. He was relieved of his office three months after the rising and using his own words he retired to a life of hunting, shooting and fishing. His most important contribution in life occurred when he was a young officer serving with the 11th Devon Regiment in India. Bored with the game of billiards while serving in a station where there was not much action, he invented the game of snooker. Ouch! The Duchess of Windsor and Aileen Guinness Plunkett meet in every woman's nightmare. The venue is a cocktail party in Gay Paris in the 1930s. Wallace Simpson lived a life of leisure as a society celebrity, along with her husband, the former King Edward VIII, who abdicated his throne to marry her. Aileen Guinness was also a social celebrity, one of the Golden Guinness Guards. She too had matrimonial problems, resulting from a short fling she had with a debonair Douglas Fairbanks Jr. when, she stayed, when he stayed in Luttrellstown Castle as a guest while filming in Ireland. However, on the night of the cocktail party, both ladies must have been totally embarrassed to find themselves dressed in the same attire. In the last 1950s, in the late 1950s, early 1960s, Lady Aileen would be driven out to Dublin Airport in her chauffeured limousine almost every Saturday morning. There she would board a flight to Paris and on arrival in Paris she would be whizzed away to her hairdresser or coiffure. Afterwards she would dine in one of her favourite Parisian restaurants, return to her hotel and board a plane back to Dublin the following morning. And wouldn't you do that yourself if you had the money?